Hey there, and welcome back to Blessed Seeds, an educational monster train series where we enjoy the strongest challenges around. So I think this is probably the last of my, well, the present little grouping of Blessed Seeds. I started doing this because I needed some feels good runs, and I hadn't played some Blessed Seeds in a while. So these are a lot of fun. I have a blast with this. And if anything is to be learned from the metrics on the videos, they seem to be fairly popular as well. It turns out people like watching things pop off. I do think that obviously it would not be nearly as successful if there were not also a lot of cursed runs run as well, right? I don't think if I just simply had blessed runs that it would be nearly as interesting of a series, but having some intermixed in is nice. I think that that actually improves the quality of the series. This is actually an interesting sort of metrics game in general is that I watch, if you only play cursed runs, they, the viewership actually dips. People get less interested in it, but when you spice it up, you actually improve both of them. So the blessed and the cursed runs become more popular as a result. Even the random weeks before I started the daily challenge series, right? Before I did that, I actually put dailies in here randomly as well. And that actually spiked it up as well, which was a part of the reason I even considered doing the daily challenge series. For whatever reason, mixing things up in this particular series makes it perform better. I couldn't tell you why. I guess people just like variety, right? If you have a strong opinion on that, let me know. Anyway, uh, at this point, I think I, this will be the last blessed run for a while, maybe, unless someone submits something that just sounds cool, right? Uh, this one was very interesting to me because it doesn't have, you know, the classic successful high rolls, right? I don't actually know. I, this is probably a Steel Singer run for all I'm aware, frankly. I, I look at this and I'm just thinking, well, it's Stygian and it's Sentian, so maybe there's a Founding Seal in here is my first guess. You have Stygian, probably a Founding Seal run, but but otherwise, no great guesses, right? I was originally thinking Steel Singer. My gut is it's either Steel Singer or like just a Founding Seal run. We'll see. It's all good either way. I'm trying to I try to avoid the Hellhorned blessed runs because i can tell you what i'm not interested in playing 500 apex imp runs i know he can do a billion damage of course he's a busted unit he's only there's only so much i can do there though right the it's just all right i'm a little over apex imp i i tend to be that way and I, i'm always scared of umbra high rolls because i'm like please don't make me play morsel made it's very strong and wins and i will do it if i need to to win but boy, am I not going to enjoy playing 7,000 morsels in this run. So it's always a mixed thing. Anyway, the fact that this is a blessed sentient submission is very interesting to me. So fun. We'll see what we get. Probably founding seal early and then some sirens blow up or whatever. I mean, that run is nuts. I would imagine that crushes divinity. But that said, I mean, a 68k score is not the highest blessed run I've ever seen. I was certainly not an infinite, at least, which would be in the 80s. But 68 is very confident. That's a very strong run, no matter what. Probably like a three to four turn divinity rush, I think, if I'm thinking correctly. So anyway, if you're just joining us for the first time, let me explain what's going on. Basically, I am playing viewer submitted runs. These are runs submitted by viewers. And surprisingly, whether they be blessed or cursed, the idea is if you're playing Covenant 25 Monster Train and you either suffer through a run for some reason, you could call it cursed, or you find a run that's just awesome and you crush, you could call that blessed. And I tend to prefer runs that are very educational on the cursed side. It's, you know, it's one thing to be like, oh, oh this run, this run's going to kill everyone, right? And it's kind of interesting to puzzle your way through it, right? And maybe find some, a couple of those. The problem is that those runs tend to take very long periods of time. And you know what I've learned? People don't watch most of those runs. They watch maybe 30 minutes of at most of my two-hour episodes and then tune out. So... In general, I find the ones that are most successful in this series, not just from a video perspective, but also from just people learning stuff, are ones that are kind of somewhere in the middle. They're not usually the most awful runs in the world, but they're also not usually the, you know, they're not easy either, right? I wouldn't call them mid-rolls necessarily. Or maybe they're mid-rolls if you know what to do, you know? Things like that. Those are always very interesting to me. 
Plus, I feel like I have something interesting to say, which I think is a big part of the series and what I enjoy doing about these runs in the first place. I like talking about my decisions and hopefully informing people about why I make them. Anyway, you find one of those runs, you go to your run summary, you generate a challenge link similar to the run that you see here at the top of the screen, you send it my way. Easiest way is via Discord. That one is, that's the easiest way because you can submit it into a channel. Other people will play the run and you'll get other people playing and giving you some feedback. Oftentimes, cursed runs are a lot more popular than blessed runs just in general, but all the same, you'll get some feedback on those. You, of course, could still submit them to me via YouTube comment or whatever. Honestly, it's fine. So all good. And I think that's it. So we're currently on a 74 win streak on this particular series. At this point, this is complete. This win streak, I shouldn't even be tracking it. I'm thinking about dropping it. It's so jank and mix matched, right? It's got like a daily challenge in there. It's got some bless, some cursed. It really doesn't matter, honestly. I think I'm probably just going to drop the tracking of the win streak for this particular series. But maybe I'll wait until I lose a run before doing that right and then when i reset it i'll just stop tracking that's my thought anyway regardless it was a blessed legion of bombs run with harvest rector and a multi-striking multi-striking self-infused baron a very interesting run i think you probably could have solo carried on legion but we didn't we chose to have some rector nonsense going in as well it was funny some people on discord were commenting about some combats that i didn't play perfectly optimally and i'm just looking at this combat and i'm going hey i'm we easy win take zero damage no matter what i'm sorry i didn't optimally decide to set one guy in front of another and in front of another it's you know at this point just slam the cards blow the units up win take no damage all good so very fun run, though. I love Legion of Bombs. You get a lot of flexibility there. So, But that's all I've got on that one. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's start this episode already. I'm seven minutes in. What am I doing? All right. Hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing great, actually made some really good progress on recording just generally been working on a bunch of random stuff as well some things has been nice to catch back up on i feel like i'm at a point where i could really use a three-day weekend that's kind of where i'm at so i'm thinking i'm gonna just randomly take a friday off or something coming up and just ignore all other responsibilities or whatever i'm just at that point where it's like you know two days is not enough it's like all right i want to i want a number three here so that's probably going to be happening in the near future. Maybe like a Friday off or something. We'll see. Anyway, let's play this run. Today we are Default Awoken Exile Stygian, a fine clan combo. I have no problems with this. We are facing Rage Talos, Spell Shield Fell, and Sap Seraph. We have Sharpen, Mollusk Mage, Pyre Shards. None of these are very impressive. Mollusk Mage is fine early. We at least have Restores. Sharpen will do something. Pyre Shards is also here. I don't think these Spikes cards are going to really amount to much in terms of the grand scheme of the run, but at least Pyre Shards goes away and maybe we can maybe we can put a random minus two and sharpen and make it tolerable, right? Let's see. Temples today are four, five, six. Three temples all in the middle is very interesting. Nothing early, nothing late. Bizarre. We have a removal dupe on magic side on eight. Very good. Definitely going there. We have a magic and a steel on seven. Steel has the vortex and cave. Very strong. The horde is at least on the magic side, so it's pretty good in general. Magic only on six with vortex. Competes with a hell vent and a cave. No steel shop. Steel shop with horde on five. Trinket shop with money on five as well. No removals there. Nothing wrong with that, but something to keep in mind. We have removal dupe on four. Again, no steel shop. Magic shop competes with it. We have a Stygian banner on the magic side as well, so all good. Double steals in the early. Double Stygian banners in the early game as well. We do have an Awoken banner if we need it, but I don't know. We'll see. Meow. All right. Let's play some Monster Train. What do we get? Explosive or Cultivating Sentient? It's going to be Cultivating... I normally don't click Sun Sentient first, but in this particular instance I did, because it kind of doesn't matter for this champion, right? You're always going to pick either Cultivating or Spikes. It's all good. Capricious Reflection or Jack Strips. A lot of people tell me 
you shouldn't take capricious reflection early and i just disagree now that said jack strips is actually really good here so let's not ignore it one of the biggest problems Sentient has is access to backline, and we have essentially none of it outside of Sharpen right now, and Spikes in general. This can actually help a truckload in this run. So, we need to offset the potential value of Capricious Reflection versus Jack Strips. I think I'm going to go with the Reflection here. Because I can always play spikes on her. I have three cards that do it. And I can probably keep her alive. But also because of cultivating, I'd like those back lines attacking her. And I think Capricious Reflection rocks. So grab money, move on, easy stuff. Unit draft, sure. No problems here. As long as I draw spikes before these back lines walk too far. I could actually play bottom floor. It's a little bit risky, but... There's also no real reason to do it. That's just generally something to keep in mind, right? I just, you may as well play top floor here. Now I am gonna put the spikes in instead of dropping in a train steward. Couple reasons, I'd like to have a, what's it called? Ah, uh, bummer. I'd like to, we, we missed the collector and there's nothing we can do about it, I don't think. No, no chance, no chance. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get the second mollusk mage on this floor, basically. Eight spikes is pretty good. I might as well play out the train steward and try to kill this thing on mid floor. Make it so I don't take a million damage. We clear top floor, great work. I should really consider restore upstairs, double foregone powers middle here. Hopefully we're gonna kill that back one or that front one rather. We go sharpen up on front uh actually what we should do is play mollusk mage one and then restore good great and then we drop some frostbite downstairs and we have the rest cleared out perfect all right no big deal yeah you just you use 22 heal regen in order to overpower the boss here and we are chilling easy all right no problems the random mollusk mages are doing excellent work here. The spike's actually also helping a fair bit. Zero cost restoration detonation. I mean, really, though, it's going to be double stack Wildwood Sap. This rips. You find a minus two here, X5 that or something crazy, and this is really, really good. We're also into the right stap Sarah for this, or rather not chased at least. I'm going to take that. I would might I might normally consider Vine Grasp, but it's consumed, so I don't want it. We'll take the double stack here. Oh, this is simple. This is just minus one Crystallis for sure. I love the fact that oh, Flash Freeze getting double stack makes it much worse. Crystallis is good. Large Stone Siren of the Sea. You know, it's not great, but I will still take it. It's a good infusion, and it's fine. We're going to go to the right still. Maybe I see an... A multi-strike? I mean, it's better than the magic shop, right? Yeah, I don't have a good holdover. We'll check. We'll see what we get. Steel shop, endless. Kind of gross. We get an... Oh! Eel Gorgon. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. It's got a battle stone. I, I don't hate that. That's perfect, in fact. Well, we just take the Gorgon, right? I, I missed the multi-strike Titan Sentry. Bummer, but... Now, there is a... Endless is not it. I mean, I could have taken Endless Shark there, but the Gorgon is really good here, right? Really good. Let's re-roll this. Large Stone would be sick. Okay. Well, Multi-Strike into the Siren would be cool here. I think we can kind of just chill. I'm... I want to upgrade them, though... I guess I get another chance here. I already have the Infusion of Dreams, though, right? I have the Siren of the Sea Infusion here. So really not much to add. What if I just take health here? And then we go... I don't know what the Awoken Banner gives me, but I just give up on this stuff. We do Siren Infusion. We do Space. We put two of them behind Sentient and then Cultivate. And that rips. I think we're good with that. Just take health here. 
Sure, cool, I'm fine with that. That's a very powerful play. We don't have to even upgrade the Siren because she's going to get sacrificed into the ether no matter what. And I am going to grab Root Split Mask here. It prevents things from walking on me. Very good. And we should crush from here, right? Almost no concern. Spikes, whatever. Fine, I took health. We're chilling. Give me this. Yeah, I was going to say give me the Gorgon first. Extremely good. Now, there's no real reason to incant yet. All right. Siren lands middle. I might as well use her, right? There's really no reason not to. She stabs and kills a guy. Cool. Right? It's it's easy. Now, that's a terrible hand here. I think I would like... If I simply play Mollusk Mage in back, we get that other one, then we put a double train stewards downstairs. Truly all, oops, all units is where we're at. Now I did hurt the cultivates there, but that's okay, I think. All right. I'm going to drop in a Wildwood Sap here that's with the double regen, big plays. I'm going to try to, yeah, all right. We at least push something here. We lose the Mollusk Mage. I'm not terribly mad about it, right? Cool, let's heal up front, I think, for sure. I would like to pummel middle. That just seems smart to me. And then we're gonna pyre shards upstairs. And foregone power the boss. Siren does a pretty good job, honestly. She just slams that thing three times. We should crush up here, right? Yeah, you airdrop in Mollusk Mage. We get a big heal in the back here. And that truly just crushes this guy, right? Because it keeps Sentient from dying. Okay. Cool, good stuff. Steel Enhancer, sure. This is a great card. If I can get draw, it's good. It's plus three, plus three. Restoration Detonation is nice. Sting with a plus ten is pretty good. I don't think the Permafrost is doing Steel Enhancer any favors, but we'll take it all the same. Very good stats. Am I going to grab minus one Frenzied Swarm? Maybe. Probably. It's pretty decent. It does compete with Foregone Powers, unfortunately, but I also kind of don't care. I have Gorgon as my line. I can just power heal. I think I'm just going to skip this for money, actually. We chill and move on. We go left. I want to look at this horde. First Hell Pact. This could have some good stuff in it, right? I'm trying to think. This is basically, you've got what? Obviously a bunch of event cards, but it's the two spikes that could be pretty cool here. Yeah, it is two spikes that are driving this. So I wonder if we're going to find any of those. That's the real question, right? It's hard to say, but I think I'm going to try. I mean, because the opportunity, if we find an Awoken's real spike, this blows up. Sinner Salve, we're not even targeting one of them, guaranteed, right? It's going to be okay, but first Hell Pact, for sure. We'll just see what we get there. Awoken Banner. Oh, hey, look, it's Burnout 1 Awoken Hollow. He's here. It's actually really rare to roll Burnout 1 on a unit, so it's very funny to see it. You could actually take him as a cool infusion into the Gorgon, too, right? Put him in there, and he gets Rejuvenate Cultivate 2. It prevents you from having two of them unless you hit a Tiny Stone, though. But it's all good. I think we just skip here. It's chilling. I came here for the Horde, which is good. Oh. Well, hey, look at that. Automatic Rail Spikes. Absolutely. Incredible. 100%. Cool. All right. Well, there's my X cost. Now, I do kind of want to wait until I can hopefully see like a plus 30 or something before popping them off. I could grab the money here. I'm leaning towards ooh, what I really like, though, is I want to go to this magic shop. Because if you get like a plus 30, you can 20 piercing the automatic rail spike and then it pops off in a big way tons of damage or a 10 in piercing and do it you can't rely on 10 in piercing and plus 30 together if, as cool as that would be right the removal dupe is neat though because i could immediately get a second gorgon but i also don't think i need it 
Let's go to the magic shop and take cash here and chill. All right. All good. Okay, let's see. From here, it's as simple as, yeah, cool. Give me Gorgon. You know, you could just do Gorgon and then Siren in front in kind of a weird circumstance. I actually, just with this draw order, think that's straight up better. Cool. All good to me. I'm going to blast mid-floor because I don't feel like taking a million damage. And then we just incant and stuff and do our best, right? Yeah, Sentient's going to die eventually, but it's fine. I'm not mad about it. Mollusk Mage. We can actually keep her super healthy as a result of that. Let's go for Forgone Power. Cool. And then we move up. We'll Forgone Power again. Do a solid 70-something to him. Or to Talos, rather. All good. The Restores are going to keep our friend alive, which I really appreciate. I am just going to let Sentient eat it here, because we lose Mollusk Mage. So we're going to Wildwood Sap upstairs, Pyre Shards, and Forgone Power. Which is pretty cool. Honestly, 10 Regen does a ton of work here. So, Steel Enhancer. I'm going to sharpen in the back to increase the damage ideal. And then we're just going to spam our Regen. Our other cards are in cans. We actually lose Sentient, sadly. That's a bit of a bummer. It's okay. I'm not terribly upset about it, if I'm being honest with you. I'm pretty sure our, Sent our Siren just straight up wins this combat, actually. Right? I think she just 1v1s with 90 health or something. Yeah, she totally would. But it's fine. We have this other guy doing like 80-something damage in the back. This is going to get even stronger once we get past this, I think, right? All right, Spreading Spores, fun. Channel Song, also very fun. Remove Consume, not so fun. Channel Song could have been cool because you could Channel Song out of the second Gorgon, but now Spreading Spores... I don't like spreading spores in this instance because it's low impact for its cost. I'm just going to grab Ancient Synergy. It's already got a minus one in it. That's incredible. And then we have, for some reason, this unit draft is only showing us two cards. Normally it shows us three, but this is completely bugged and I'm not actually sure what's going wrong. Uh, anyway, we're shown Shattered Shell and Awoken Hollow. Uh, the Woken Hollow has Quick, the Shattered Shell has Rage, and I have no idea what the third unit would have shown because it's not there. And we're not going to look at this situation anymore. Moving on. Incredible. I do think an early dupe is valuable. It's really valuable, in fact. But I still pretty confidently think I want... To do that post Talos or post Bell, right? I think we can do some stuff. Maybe we see an overstack on one of these caves or whatever, right? It's possible. There's a lot of good caves here. Well, one of them's at a steel shop that we don't need, but that's okay. I think you could potentially get get away with just not even worrying about it, though. It's hard to say. We have a good dupe at the end, though. I don't know. I think we just take draw here and chill. Although we do have draw coming off of Sentient, so there's that as well. I think we just take draw and move on. I'm not going to go to this removal dupe quite yet. I think the magic shop shows some value. Minus ones are good. Would I take a holdover on anything? I do want to upgrade this rail spike and kind of have it pop off. Yeah, all right. We're going to go to the magic shop here, and I'm going to take the draw. And we'll go right. I could have taken space and gone left and immediately duped. And that's strong, but it's also... I don't need it for this mid-game. We're strong enough. Holdover is interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Minus two. I mean, make Ancient Synergy pop off, I think. It's a kind of a nasty set of rolls for my friendly neighborhood automatic rail spike. But that's okay. I could just hold over Steel Enhancer, which is, let me be real, not that good. You could hold over Sharpen. There's a minus two, although the minus two just goes into the Ancient Synergy 10 times out of 10. Interesting. Let's look at the Forge real quick. Cultivating two. I don't think I need the spikes. I'd rather the Cultivate two. 
Stygian Banner today says, Damage Shield Titan Sentry. Pretty rough, because the Revenge Triggers don't activate with the Damage Shield. That said, armor Incan Armor 2 Siren is pretty neat, but we're good. We're going to sell those. You could take Shark. He's not bad, but we're already ahead because of Siren, right? Or rather, Siren Gorgon friend. I am taking this minus two. It's going into Ancient Synergy here. It's not really, it's only a plus 20 to put it in an automatic rail spike, which is a big bummer. So let's just upgrade Ancient Synergy. That card rips now. And I think we could just purge a Sharpen from here and be okay with that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's fine. We go to 85 here. I'm not terribly upset about it. I think we skip the holdover. It's kind of Garbo, right? Yeah, it's not great. We're going to make Crystallis free. By the way, I could have gone a minus two into Wildwood Sap and really popped off by duping it a bunch. But I think we don't need to. Because it goes away is the thing. Whereas Ancient Synergy, I'm going to be redrawing it a whole ton. I'm going to put a minus one into Helical Crystallis. I'm going to take a plus 10 into a Restore, I think. I don't have to use these rail spikes to copy them yet. Let's plus 10 to restore and chill. I'm going to re-roll this. Another double stack. It's a pretty cheap one, but none of the cards are good. We do get a 20 consume on the rail spike, which is great. This is basically the same as that minus 2 in it, by the way. Which is cool. I'm going to put a minus 1 here into the Wildwood Sap. I think we just chill on that. If I go to a Hellvent randomly, I can just make another one, and I think there's a good opportunity to do so. So let's do that. Cool, fine. And I'm going to take double removals here. We're cutting two train stewards. We don't want any of those really bad turns where I draw five units. And with 270, I think we move on. I would like to save some cash for this trinket shop. And we're chilling. Yeah, 85 shards is a little dicey, but we're going to be all right. Armor Emblem, whatever. I have Yield Gorgon, it's fine. And we have a very tanky front line. It's a pretty good turn one, isn't it? Can you play bottom floor? Interesting. Why would I want to? I mean, it speeds me up. This guy's got 155. Can I ever push 155 here? 20, I can get like 1, 2, 3, 4 incants for 5 hits. I can get him up to 20, so I can do like 100 damage. No, I can't. So let's instead play top floor. And then we just go ahead and incant up. I am going to sharpen for stats. I'm going to drop 50 on this automatic rail spike just to hit this guy and move on. And that's okay. We get the collector for it too, which is worthwhile. I'm going to click Wildwood Sap. I'm going to take the, the curse out, we'll regen, and then we just go for big incants. Every incant is valuable here for a lot of reasons, mainly because I can incant Gorgon's stats up in a big way. Just take the incants, right? It's worth it. As long as I don't have a bad incant turn, we should be okay. We're chilling. Yeah, no problems. We get through this up here. The cultivates are also really strong for us, too. So not actually a problem. Curse, curse. Ah, uh, bummer. It's okay. We take an extra curse for this, but we do have the root split mask to help. So that's good. We can just blast some guys here. I'm going to click the foregone power. If it hits a curse, that's good because I can then take a restore trigger and kill this man and that's really good it's a lot of curses we are suddenly taking though unfortunately foregone power first i think good good and then we can play the curses and take the regen and we're okay all right two more curses not ideal but fine we do have no terrible issues with this otherwise kind of just play cards and crush right it's a lot of damage we're doing in the back, which is really the source of our power. So even without any incants, we were winning. Yo, double stack and snare rules. Although multi-strike edge prior really deserves like some kind of a conversation here. And then double stack awake is also present. It's very expensive. I don't think I could ever really do that. I'm going to take this in snare. That's sick. Big fan of that. Drain. 
a good answer to Divinity. Minus one is great on it. I'm probably going to be cutting some of these foregone powers eventually. Yeah, sure, let's send it. Seems good. So many free minus ones. Let's go high roll a trinket shop, yeah? Seems good to me. Trinket shop today says totem fragments. Not terrible. We do have ancient synergy. Let's see what's in the caves. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I didn't dupe early. Yeah, I don't think uh, a little ruffle will be enough. How about you give me an upgrade? How about Sunderstone into my Eelgorgon? That seems good. All right. All right. I see. I see you, Submitter. I see where you're coming from. I, I see the high roll. Now, if I re-roll this into Founding Seal, then we're cooking, right? How about you do that for me? Am I ever going to take Totem Fragment? It's not terrible. I could always Ancient Synergy something into the Aether. I'll grab Totem Fragment. This, this rips. We can still re-roll and afford. Firestone Housing is a little late. Gnarled Root, not terrible. What's coming up? Another cave, magic shop that we probably go to. I have no stings. I could take that preemptively, but I don't think it's good. Gnarled Root is not amazing. It's just what? Like, 8 damage per draw through? Nah, I think we skip and move on. Let's look at this temple real fast. Plus 30. Although I actually think Tendon Piercing is better for the Rail Spike. We can now have it pop off, and that's pretty good. I might as well take a plus 30 into the rest, into a restore or something. It's good to have health gain here. It's worth it. I'm not going to go so ham that I'm, you know, self-infusing train stewards or whatever. That just seems unnecessary. Although I guess you could, right? We're strong enough. I could take these spikes. I can take these spikes. I have enough health into my guy. It's not a big deal. Let's blow up bottom floor i guess and then double stack and snare here and he's just stuck there for a while which is cool the nice thing about that is it does mean i can just play a mollusk mage but i need to be careful because this overcharged tank is gonna farm me so i think this is actually going to be foregone power here to get the collector i'm gonna sap sentient as weird as that is she doesn't attack so it's fine Let's hit this heavy guy. I think that's going to be a good choice. We're going to go ahead and Wildwood Sap and then big restore energy here. I think the re incant is going to be more worth it than anything else. Cool. So I can just kill a man is what you're telling me, which is pretty much perfect if I'm being honest with you. Just end this guy's existence. Cool. Yeah, make a copy of that for me, please. We'll incant up. All good. We do a lot of damage, by the way. It's easy to underestimate just how much damage we do. It's a big number for anyone keeping track. A lot of regen here. We are taking hits in the back because of, you know, the obvious stuff. Now, let's play Train Steward, Train Steward, Mollusk Mage here our goal is to bait turns i'm going to crystallis up front and then we're gonna play the restore here which should kill a couple units all right that's three turns of sa of stealth gone let's heal up here i do think this is as simple as Ancient Synergy upstairs, which clears literally everything. Yes. And then I'm going to actually play the Mollusk Mage here in front for the big restore. And then seven stats. Drawing seven here. I think the Orgon powers are worth more here. Cool, we're fine. And now it's as simple as just like Mondo heals, right? This is why I did the Mollusk Mage business, because a single Mondo heal swings everything so much. Yeah, the guy stands no chance. The regen does so much work here that we just crush. Easy. Awesome. Take no damage. We get Hell's Banners. Why not? Seems good to me. 
Yeah, free Unleash the Wildwood. We click these. Look at this capricious reflection just doing so much work. Do you ever click Siren Song here? No, I don't think so. We just sap if we want to do it. Preserve, I have too many discards. Frenzied Swarm, same problem as before. We skip, it's fine. Shouldn't be much of an issue. Now, I could go for the dupe now, which is pretty powerful, but I actually want these removals. Yeah, we'll go left. This is good. Divine Temple, a Spell Chain. Spell Chain Drain is almost certainly going to be correct. Yeah. Well, I guess Double Stack is kind of the same thing, right? Although it is second incant, which is pretty cool. Let's make this restore free for obvious reasons. Make another one plus 10, same deal. Buffing those is good. I don't think this remove consume is ever the action. 20 consume? I don't hate it. I think we want to make this ensnare free too. This is such a good card. Yeah, let's do that. I'm probably removing Sharpen, by the way. But we got units to cut first. Spell Chain, I, I'm going to take it in Drain here. Yes, this is double the Sap, but it's also double the Incants, which is cool. Ten in Piercings, I mean, this is very low impact. Piercing to a Restore does actually nothing. But I don't hate it all the same, right? It's just plus ten at this point, which is fine, I guess. Meh. Cut the two train stewards. He's got to go. Got to go. Got to go. 27 cards looking pretty decent. We're drawing seven. I could Mollusk Mage, Mollusk Mage, but I'm just going to put a plus 10 in this 10 in piercing into a restore. Honestly, it's fine. Like, I don't care. I'm way ahead. It's okay. I think I'm going to buy a removal here because I'm going to this magic shop again. Yeah, I'm going to buy another removal. We just cut Mr. Mollusk Mage on this one. It's fine. And we chill. I don't want a 20 consume, a restore. It's a good addition to my survivability. Yeah, let's move on. I think we crush fell. I have no doubts in my mind. What do we have coming up? And a magic shop, steel shop. All right, no problems. We should be okay. I just play top floor and we blow up the world pretty much. Uh, Hell's Banners is really nice here. I could drop in the Mollusk Mage, but it does cause me some issues, so I'm just not going to, right? Look at that, I can play Sharpen. Amazing. I'm so good at the video game. What else do we have? All right, Incant, Incant, Incants are good. I would like to automatic Rail Spike something. So let's do that and pop one of these 12 damage guys, I guess. Fine. Incant upstairs. All good. Goodbye, Mollusk Mage. I knew ye well. Not upset about it. It's time for Wildwood Sap for sure. We play a Restore. I think I am just going to punch through these units pretty cleanly. We just double Restore for more... Or single Restore. And then we double Sap. Yeah, there we go. And then we Frostbite. We do a casual 500 damage to Fell here. Yeah, that's... That's going to be a W for sure. When you have a turn like that, there's really no doubt in my mind that you're going to win this, right? It's just really easy. And then we blow up this front guy for 150. Look how good this Totem Fragment is with automatic Rail Spike here. I just hit that man for a lot. Now, we will get the upgrade after this, so let me try to get as many copies of these as I can, basically. Card draw is your friend. Blow up this whole floor. It straight up does not matter. Incredible. We're doing 350, which is nice. All right, give me the bombs. We get to kill one guy. Incredible. I'm going to play the regen first. How much damage do I need to do for you? 50 times 2 is enough, so I can play... Or actually, we're totally fine. Just play the sharpen. Then auto rail spike him to death. Then let's drain here and chill. Cool. Boss has... 600 health left. Let's just keep going, pretty much. A lot, enough regen to keep afloat is really all I need here. And we're actually incanting past the point where any of that matters, right? Okay, the angle is actually going to be auto rail spike first for the copy, then we ancient synergy, then we just regen and 
or rather play foregone power bunch i'm looking to make as many copies of this super killer card as possible basically is my entire life's work right now hit the guy hit the dead weight incredible we're just doing a casual you know tons of sap it's 300 damage on this auto rail spike unreal I could make another copy. Yep, I could make another copy. Kill my own sentient. I think we're fine to do it. Let's do it. We shoot sentient and then we win anyway. Yeah, all right, fine. Cool, made another copy of it. I had to make sure the math actually checked out on that and I wasn't going to throw the run by killing sentient, but... Adaptive mutation is never really the angle here. It's not ever good, no. Hold over ancient synergy. No, I don't think so. Not without a split anvil or something similar. It is a lot of damage, I'll admit. That just kind of melts floors, but I don't think we need that. I think we chill, move on. Is it just card draw? I'm hitting enough minus ones that I think we're good. I just go to a magic shop and I get more things to reduce to zero. Which is what? I think it's just going to be some more restores and then I cut the sharpen. I think it's really just card draw at this point. Just I want to hit more things. Oh, no, it's space. I want a second si little buddy. Yeah, our plan is space. Don't make, a, don't make this mistake. All right. This is why we stop and think about things, by the way. Incredible. Auto rail spikes have a casual plus 40 on them, and I have seven copies. These cards crush now. And they actually have a casual plus 70 because of first hell pact, so that's pretty neat as well. Forgotten Boons, Horde, Golden Vault is honestly not bad, although it's going to be Sigil Seaweed and it's not even close. Horde today says... Oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> Alright, there it is. All right, we have a monster train on our hand. We have a true monster train on our hand. Look at that founding seal. All right, all right, we're we're chilling. Cultivating three. The the world run is so over. I cannot even begin to describe just how nonsense this is. Let's make some stuff cheaper. Plus ten. I don't. Eh, sure, why not? May as well. Double stack. No thanks. Reroll. Minus one. Sure. And I'm gonna cut Sharpen, honestly. This card sucks. Like, right? This card is bad. I don't want it. Cool. Alright, let's go. One cost cards or bust. Ancient hate. I don't even care. I can pierce through them with my ten and piercing auto rail spikes, so that's also pretty neat. Neat. This is gonna be fun. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. All right, seems good to me. Let's, I don't know, blow up one of these things downstairs. We might as well. It's good to have a ping like that. Let's just go completely ballistic here. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Let's just pop enemies. There's no reason not to. Hmm, 32 times 11. And every single one of those does indeed have a... Excuse me, every single one of these does have a Sunderstone attached to it, which is just neat. Wow, that's 270 in the back. A really strong turn. Cool. That's a lot of damage. Great. Not even mad, right? It's just fine. We just kill this guy in front. That's pretty neat, I think. And then I, what, sap Sa sentient? And then shoot this other guy and we chill. Cool. It's good. We're going to like eight turn the divinity at this point. Is basically where we are at. We do a lot of damage. Most of them are actually killing themselves on the spikes. Which is pretty funny to me. Blow this guy up. Doesn't really matter. We'll finish him because you might as well. Cool. I'm leaving in some purge copies because I'm being sloppy. The, the truth is I'm just playing the rail spikes to kill everything. We are extremely ahead and it's not even close. Our guy in the back is doing 115 times 11. That's pretty good. 
It's pretty decent, I think, is the way I would describe it. And then you can... We also have Sap, which just is a very silly element of this run as well. Right, I can just sap something down to nothing. This guy also got silence, which is a real bummer for him. He dies in one round, right? Yeah, absolutely. Cool, this is going to be a big... This is going to be a ridiculous run. Another double stack and snare. Truthfully, it's not a problem to take more of those since I'm going to a magic shop. It's They replace themselves, which makes them a free incant, so sure. Crystalline Seeds is double stacked. Weird. Siren Song? Nah. Cuddle Hex. Endless Cuddle Hex. No, it doesn't matter. We go left. It's easy. We're going to put a minus one into, you guessed it, the other Ensnare. Permafrost, I don't think, needs it. I guess I'll look at these. Ooh, I get a Lightstone casing. Cursed Vines is probably free. Free Incant. Is there a Lightstone casing angle that I really want here? I don't think so. I guess a holdover on Ancient Synergy if they show it to me, right? I would take that. Sure, what do you got? Alright, no holdover on Ancient Synergy, which simply means I no longer care. Cool, accurate. Alright, we'll take the money, I don't care. I'm going to grab second Gorgon. Very good. Cool. We are very strong. I'm going to cut Mollusk Mage here. And the last cut is just a foregone power, because having this many is annoying. We go in here. Curse Vines is free real estate. We're going to spin this. Trader's Quill, Pyrewall, Tethys Scales, kind of whatever. I think this is just bio removal on another foregone power. And that will be a very strong setup for this run. Cool. I guess I can 20 consume one of these restores and just redraw the better ones, right? Sure, why not? It's fine. And I think we're chilling. 175 out of 100. We're going to blow up Seraph. He doesn't stand... He doesn't stand a ghost of a chance. This guy is going to go down so fast. The second he shows up on my floor, he's just gone. Now, there is the possibility that I... I don't think we can one-turn him here. Let's play upstairs. Maybe I can get him on turn two, right? I don't want to self-ping. They hurt too... The cards hurt too much. I will actually vine grasp myself. That's a good one. I guess we're just going to shoot enemies, right? Kill that man in front real quick and then incant. It seems okay. Sure, he's going to come upstairs now. This shouldn't be a problem because I just drop in the Gorgon. We Vine Grasp here. And I think we just kind of pop off, right? There's very little complexity to this. Every shot is just like a ridiculous amount of damage, right? Yeah, cool. He takes like a thousand damage on turn one or turn two rather. Now, I think I beat him on the next turn when he comes back up here, right? I believe is the way this will work. So if I can push through mid-floor, I should. Yes. That's helpful. Cool. Now, we should also try to stop some of this damage upstairs. I think it's fine. We'll get some incants. All good. Fine. Okay, he comes back upstairs. Now, he should get completely sandblasted now, is our plan. Every enemy we hit is hugely valuable. Every single card we play is a big deal. Yeah, he's actually just dead right now. Incredible, there it is. Cool, well done, bud, well done. Guy just takes five billion damage and passes away. Cool, 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 cool. That's a seven turn boss rush on Seraph. And Divinity should be actually even easier because he never leaves the turn, the floor, right? I think I can maybe get him in two. Two turns, possibly, depending on how strong my first two turns are. It's a decent turn. We play top floor, of course. We just, everything here is free. It does not matter. I'm going to self-ping for the Cultivate here. And then we shoot. That's 651 on turn one. Pretty decent. We are just super racing for anyone keeping track. 
airdrop in this Gorgon. We do get this wonderful Unleash the Wildwood that I'm a big fan of. We're going to go ahead and self-ping here. Now, unfortunately, I think... I think we should ping these guys away on this next floor, right? Because I don't want to deal with their damage shield. That's actually a big deal. Okay, all right. Let's go fast. Come on, you got to go fast here. Good, let's go. Let's do it. Clear the top floor. All right, there we are. Self-ping. Incredible. Do it. Scale somebody. Wonderful. Click the cards. Okay, we're almost there. Man, we are one turn away from a kill here. We are very close. I think we can get it if I draw decently here. That looks pretty decent to me. Cool, so you shoot one man, he's dead. Good. We shoot another man, he is dead. Good. We shoot this friend and he's also passed away and uh we win good job hey look at that we did it <laughs> you just use the rail spikes to kill everything and then you win on turn three or turn four i guess it was yeah it was a four turns to get the kill pretty good honestly pretty decent we might have the highest score i think it's possible i think you could also have pushed this way higher i mean the pieces are all there to do so i didn't stealth infuse up to 200 I guess you could have. It just seems really pointless to do that unless you're explicitly in the 200 shard meta or something. 71k is pretty decent. Yeah, all right, cool. Look at that, awesome, go team. Other person, all right, they did the same thing. Okay, they have much less exciting automatic rail spike than we do. A lot of things that cost stuff. Siren of the Sea, they've put the large stone in. Okay, so they found a large stone. That's nice, that's helpful. And then they took double draw. We were slowed down a little bit by having to take space, but otherwise this looks extremely similar. Yeah, looks extremely similar otherwise. Some cards I skipped, right? Like, I don't care about flash freeze here, whatever. Double stack drain, all, all good, that's fine, cool. And then... Yeah, they got the ensnare. I think we did a kind of cleaner play of this, right? I mean, the seven auto rail spikes with first hell pact is just... That's just good. I like that. And then the Gorgons are just doing truckloads of damage, right? We're just really plowing through. Almost everything is hyper upgraded thanks to Capricious Reflection. Battlestone is a fine pickup for an Eel Gorgon, whatever. I'm not even mad about it. I probably would have bought that myself, actually. So it's okay. And then everything else is just ensnares are good. Steel Enhancer did fine. The drain was all right. I almost never got to actually play the spell chain copy just because I was spending all my ember on the bombs that clear the floors faster, these rail spikes. More like automatic shotguns, right? This thing is this thing is nuts. It's so good. It's got a plus 70 on it. And then I had the totem fragment. This thing could do 210 no problem. Just pop enemies immediately. Ancient Synergy doing good work. A lot of Restore Powers. Really liked that double stack Wildwood Sap we got for free. This did a lot of heavy lifting in a lot of parts of the game. I think Wildwood Sap gets a bad rap, honestly. People talk down about this card in the DLC. I think it's great. It's not always the play for your win con, right? Unlike the pre-DLC, you're not usually stacking regen to insane levels. But... It's still awesome in the mid and early game. It's extremely good in the early game. A single Wildwood Sap on Sentient, and I'm like very confident that whatever our backline is can push through. So pretty good stuff there. Sigiled Seaweed's awesome. Founding Seal's also here. Free cards. Cursed Vines is awesome. Just really solid stuff altogether. So excellent. Awesome. Big fan. And that is an, that's an awesome capstone here. I'm very happy about that. Brings us up to 75 wins on this particular series. And yeah, all right, I'll let you go there. So hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.